Connect with us on Facebook and receive special posts just for our comrades. Information, not your name. I dreamed at 250 or 200. Hello and welcome to The Complete Painter. Something smells good out there. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I already ate. But I am glad that you're watching today because we have something special planned just for you. Today, we're gonna paint your TV. Well, I was thinking of a nice powder blue. <laughs> oh no, not like that exactly. Let's see, what do we have around here? Uh, here, look, huh? We're going to paint, paint your TV. <laughs> oh, never mind for now, don't worry. No TVs were harmed in the making of this episode. But if you want to see some cool stuff, how we painted a realistic retro TV set, learn some interesting things about lighting and reflections, and show you how we painted a really, really, really small portrait, stick around because it's all coming up next on The Complete Painter. Here's a painting here that we did a while ago, but just uh, want to mention a few things while we have this out. Uh, number one, it's been used in a couple shows in the past, and it's several years old, and it's got little scuffs from moving it around a little bit. You really can't see that on camera, but I just noticed that. So this is a case where even something I painted years ago, I'm going to have to match these colors exactly to kind of touch that up. So that's, you know, we're always stressing. Really do practice that and be able to uh, do color mixing very well. No matter what your style is, you don't have to paint realism, but you might have to retouch up your own work. But we have this TV here, and really, you know, what's kind of interesting about this, this was kind of done back in college, and we were just given the assignment to do a painting and given a title. We could do it anything we wanted, but the title was Worlds, you know. And I thought how sitting in my friend's house, how there's all these worlds going on within just an average boring scene. You know, there's outside, there's the worlds in the different rooms, the things that take place there. We have a whole drama of some real life uh, story uh, of a poster on the wall. We have current events going on TV. So that's just, you know, we don't want to get into all that. But the point is, we're painting three different circumstances here. We're painting real life, you know, three-dimensional real life with the person in the room and so forth. And we're painting a photo image on the wall. That's going to have its own characteristics to it. And then we're painting, trying to uh, emulate a TV tube, a TV set. And that's the most challenging thing about this whole painting, actually. Uh, what's going on with that is... You know, in real life, this is a situation where we just have to kind of use some common sense and think about uh, the practical parts of painting, kind of the science of it, and also don't assume things. You know, what we know in real life is just someone doing an interview with black curtains behind them. We know that's the case. We could see that watching TV. So you would be tempted, and which kind of what I did at first, is just took some black paint you know, a very dark color, and painted that. And it just didn't look right, <laughs> because a TV never looks truly black in any area. It can only be as dark as the TV tube or screen itself. And there's usually some type of gray or a dark gray. So they can, by turning the TV on, it can only get brighter. <laughs> uh, you know, it's illuminated. So I really wasn't thinking. I was assuming, I, you know, not painting what was really in front of you, painting what I think it should be. Um, so I went back and I started, we did one coat here and we're, we're lightening up a type of a gray uh, color, kind of the TV tube. So that would be the way to start that out, is just paint the color with the TV tube or screen, whatever you have, looks like when it's off. 
okay, that's as dark as it's going to get. So once you put an image on there and turn the TV on, it's only going to get brighter. So we have that circumstance. And in addition to that, because it's smooth surface, especially if it's a TV tube like an old TV here, uh, you're going to have reflections into that. But it will only be things in the room or in the environment that are brighter than that TV screen, wherever it happens to be. Uh, parts of the screen are bright, right? It's illuminated very bright, so you're not going to see reflections into a bright value very well. Uh, other parts of the screen are going to be darker, so things might reflect into that area, but it won't into the bright area. So that's just the rule of reflections. In order to see an object reflecting into a surface, uh, the surface has to be darker than the object, and that object could be a light bulb, okay? So I'm just, you know, it helps me to know these rules before I even start painting things. And, you know, especially if you're making up from your imagination, we're not using or relying on the reference from the photo because that's not going to look right, okay? It's too bright in the photo. It can't capture the contrast correctly. So we can't depend on that. We have to uh, take notes or remember what we see in real life or look at another TV set, which is what I did. I found a similar TV and just kind of looked at it to remind myself, what did this really look like uh, with that particular scene on TV? So only kind of bright things that are like a window or a light bulb, things like that that are quite bright will probably uh, reflect into that and they'll only reflect into areas of that screen that are darker like a dark background. Right, now we're moving down to a snail's pace here. This is where every little thing matters. <laughs> uh, it's kind of the fun part because you're just changing things a little bit. But uh, you know, if the paint started getting sticky on there too and you do your light and dark shapes and you really can't blend with a small brush, I've been putting uh, my brush dipping it in oil. That's a good thing. It will soften up the paint so it will move around and blend a little bit if it's getting kind of sticky versus putting it in thinner. That'll do it too, but it, thinner use that basically when you're trying to take the paint off. Okay, we'll let our buttons dry and I think our shadows around the TV are dry enough where we can give it a final coat. Uh, just kind of a, rem a reminder painting any kind of shadows, not just for this, is the light creating a specific shadow has nothing to do with the value and color of that shadow. It doesn't shine there. What I'm going to be thinking about when I paint these shadows is what light does shine in those areas. You know, uh, will it be a warm light from a, a lamp or something, or the ceiling light, or just light bouncing around the walls, reflecting off of different materials, wood, basketball, all those kinds of things. So that will determine how I paint these shadows. But what the actual light source does determine is the shape of it, kind of the angle of this shadow, and also the edges of it. It's going to be very soft edges in some of this. That's when I'm going to soften some of these. It's more of a gradual uh, shadow. That's because a window is a very wide light source, especially if you have a two windows or a series of windows. It's coming like light coming from many different directions. So it's going to be a very diffused, soft edge on a shadow for something like that. Where a lamp or a ceiling lamp, it's coming from a very uh, pinpointed area, or very focused light, and it will have a sharper edge for something like that. Uh, but also one other thing that kind of you'll have a softer edge in the shadow if the object, let's say a TV, is casting a shadow on the wall. And if the TV is far away from that surface, the wall, it is diffused and is a little softer edge. Uh, so and if it's close to the wall, it will be a sharp edge. So those things are something you want to think about as well. This antenna angles towards the wall, making the shadow edge soft to sharp. So we'll just do that and also to kind of create this illusion of a window from the right with cool light and a an, uh, warm light from the upper left, like a ceiling. Uh, we're going to redo this shadow on the poster and where we see it a little more. And it's going to be a cool looking shadow because the window is going to shine there, uh, but the light won't. So we'll just do that and maybe brighten up a few things on the TV tube. And that's about all we have to do uh, to finish this up. <laughs> so 
So here we are in the dark, but we kind of see a similar situation. We have a warm light and we only have a warm shadow as well because there's no cool light sources to deal with. As soon as we turn on a cool light, like would be a window, now we have warm and cool shadows from the same object. But just be careful, the cool light is not creating or resulting in the cool shadow. They're opposites from each other. But if you had two light sources and they are both warm, they would result in uh, two warm shadows as well. So don't follow any kind of rule saying, you know, what a shadow should or shouldn't look like in the color. It all depends on the situation and the lighting in your scene at that time. Now I know what a few of you might be thinking. This gets kind of complicated with all this talk about light sources and the colors and shadows. Isn't there an easier way to paint a shadow? Well, it's not quite as accurate technically, but here's a good trick that kind of is pretty simple to do without too much thinking going on. Imagine this is a real wall. This is the color of the wall. This holds something in front of there. You create a shadow, and that's the color this wall would be in shadow. And you just kind of uh, mix your paint and paint next to that and see if they match. Now, it may be a little off technically because what if the lighting in your room is different than what you're painting? Uh, but if you can set up your room, you know, with similar lighting, maybe a window and a lamp on in, in the room as well, they're going to make shadows that are very similar to what you're painting. And if you're just curious, as far as, you know, uh, colors fooling you, uh, we assume, you know, we're looking at an, an, an image of a TV studio and it's got black curtains, a black background, and you think, oh, it looks black to us when you're watching it. And really, we're, we're thinking that as we watch it. And you know, when you turn the TV off, there's the color. That's as dark as it's ever going to get. And then when you turn uh, the, the show on and you see the black background, it doesn't get any darker. <laughs> it's, so the point is, it never is really truly black. It's fooling us. So in review, the points we want to remember, this is true for any smooth uh, surface. Uh, no matter what the surface color is, only things that are lighter in value will reflect into it. And those situations change. The environment can change and the surface can change in the case of a TV tube like this. So whatever it is at that moment, certain things will reflect into it and certain things won't. And then last, uh, as far as painting reflections, you can paint solid. If you have a, a detailed undertone or the, the surface or object itself is detailed and you're painting a detailed reflection on top of it, uh, it might be better to do a glaze method. And then you could wipe off things and play around with stuff without messing up the background.